YouTube. This is Desdemona. In this video, I will show you how to create Twitch emotes in Adobe Illustrator. I've already created my document, but here you can see the options I chose. I like to work in a 500 by 500 pixel artboard, but as long as your artboard is square, you can work in the size that works best for you. I start out by sketching my design with a default brush, just to map out the proportions and shape what I want to achieve. Remember to keep in mind when creating an emote that they will be seen in much smaller proportions. So while detail is important, there's not really a need to make the image overly complex. It helps to have a clear plan and plenty of reference images so that you create an image that you and your chat love. Once I've completed the sketch, I create a new layer and start creating the line work for my emote, attempting to add a little of my own character to the image. In other words, I accidentally make this cactar look a bit like a running pickle. But hey, it's a cute pickle. This video is sped up, so don't feel like you need to work this quickly. Take your time and use the undo button as much as your heart desires. You can see I use it a lot. Don't be like me here with the eyes and mustache pieces. Use copy and paste. It makes a much more symmetrical image. Once I've completed the outline, I expand the brush strokes before I resize to better fit the artboard. I do this because I want my proportions to stay the same as when I drew them. And if I didn't expand, the lines would look thicker whenever I squished the image. It'll save me a lot of time whenever I'm coloring the image as well, because it works really smoothly with the shape tool. I use Shift M or the Shape tool a lot whenever I'm coloring the emote. By no means am I a master of this tool. I do find it a huge time saver and worth learning though. It makes the process of creating shadows and highlights much easier than just using the eraser. The basics are just to use Shift M to create the shapes you want out of overlapping objects and then add Alt to erase the portions of a shape that are excess. But really, just create an image that makes you happy, however you know how to create it. I taught myself everything that I know about Illustrator, so there may be even more efficient ways out there.
While doing the color, you will note that I create a lot of layers. I'm not the best at remembering to name my layers, mostly because I end up collapsing them in the end, but I do use them a lot. They really do make a difference in keeping the image organized. They are especially helpful if you decide to change up the color of your emote later on as your stream evolves. My emotes used to be pink, and now they're teal, but they're the same emote. A bonus to creating an illustrator is that you can use whatever you create all over your stream, not just for emotes. My emotes are altered in use for my alerts as well. You could even expand them and make merch for you and your fans. Don't forget to occasionally zoom in and out the way I did there to remind yourself of what the image is going to look like in your chat. If you would like to see some more emotes that I've created, there are a bunch on my website in my portfolio. I've created emotes in both Illustrator and in ArtRage 5. When exporting emotes, I have found that I am most happy with images that are exported in the Save for Web Legacy format. It takes a bit more time, but you'll be happier with how the vector image shrinks and adjusts and looks crisp and clean. I simply adjust the image size and give my new emote a name that I can remember easily for uploading. 
thank you everybody who watched this video. I hope you enjoyed my first tutorial. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If there's any other kind of tutorials or different types of videos that you would like to see, please let me know in the comments. And feel free to stop by one of my live streams on Twitch.